Hello and welcome to Kismet Rising. It's been so long since I've done an energy forecast and I'm very well aware of that. I think that there's been so much going on in terms of the energy. It's been difficult for me to condense it to a video and also to be able to put it out there in a way that isn't really scary for people um, or in a way that is um, palatable for people rather. So I've decided to go ahead anyway and speak about this. And um, yeah, you're welcome to ask me whatever you'd like to in the comment section or to uh, email me at info at kismetrising.com and I will answer you as best as I can as soon as I can. So let's talk a little bit about what's happened before this energy. Uh, this has been a time where um, we've been coming to uh, realizations. I would say the time of October and uh, just till the beginning of November was very much a time where we would have come to the end of our tether in terms of something or the other. Something that perhaps you've been thinking about for quite some time, you've been mulling about, you're quite well aware of the fact that uh, you need to make some changes or there has to be some decisions that needed to be made, but there would have been a renewal on some level. There might've been a kind of um, a remembrance of uh, an event that took place previously in your life, uh, which turns out to be quite um, significant at this moment. So it's almost like you would have remembered something that's highly relevant from your past, an energy highly relevant from your past. Perhaps you could have visited a place that you had lived in previously, or perhaps you would have uh, connected with an energy on some level, perhaps with an old uh, mate or an old a lover, or of somebody you would have connected in some way to an old energy that reminds you of how the current energy that you're in right now needs to shift or needs to change in some kind of way in order for you to make progress, in order for you to reach a greater level of satisfaction, a greater level of uh, joy in your life and also peace. And I'm, I think that that has been the energy for October that would have been uh, what we were working with. For those of you who did not have that kind of remembrance um, or that pivotal moment where things would have changed for you in that way, you would have had a gradual build up to something which you know that you no longer can do anymore. Now, this decisions that you need to make might have been revisited many times before, but you have not taken the action to actually go ahead and uh, make it a reality. And I think that what's happened now in the month of October that we've passed is that you would have come to a point where you have really decided now that you will take that action. And it doesn't matter how long you will need to actually uh, go ahead and, and take that action or to be able to set things in motion. That doesn't matter. What matters really is that you are you have made the decision. And as you've made that decision, your energy changes, your cellular uh, health changes and things many things change in your life and it actually sets in motion what you desire deep down without you even having to articulate it, without you even needing to move ahead and take physical action. So ultimately, what you have decided in the month of October is going to be underway. It's going to be in action. Now for many, many, not everyone, but for many, the months of say between June and the beginning of October were very uh, stagnant. There was a stagnant period where things weren't flowing, where things weren't moving. There might've been a lot of action in your life. You might've been doing things like making big purchases, etc. but it wasn't as if things, it wasn't as if you would feel comfortable in being able to uh, relax in whatever you have done or whatever purchases you've made or whatever decisions you've taken. So now um, that feeling would come from about the beginning of October onward. I would say that around the second week of October onward, you would have found that you begin to settle into what it is that you have been playing with and you would have been more easily able to do that. Then you would be able to, from I would say end of May, June, July, August, September, these were months where things were uh, almost in a sense, in a state of limbo, where things were just up in the air and not really settled. And so October, November, it's definitely time for settling. Now, there's not much time between the time that you have to settle into this and the time that things start to shift and started to change quite rapidly. So I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but 
for the moment, I just want to say that there's another way in which this energy would have impacted some of you from between uh, June and October. And that would be that perhaps you had decided to do something, but you weren't able to, to go ahead with it. Or you might have try to uh, complete uh, something like a dissertation, make a film, uh, do s some kind of study, but you weren't able to do it. You might have been trying to get a business off the ground, but you weren't able to do it. And all of these things would have started moving ahead, if not slowly, then rapidly at the beginning of October. I apologize for the sounds that are coming from outside um, here. All right. So then uh, moving ahead, what else are we dealing with? So there's so much that we're dealing with right now, and it's actually quite um, it's it's actually quite intense. There's really a lot of intense energy. But right now, what I'd like to talk about are the eclipses, and so we we know that we are in eclipse season right now, and we've just had a lunar eclipse, and we are about to walk towards a solar eclipse, and so. We are smack bang in the middle of two eclipses and these eclipses begin a cycle for us, for us that is going to take us for many many uh, months and years to come so for some of you it would be you would be feeling that the um the cycle a cycle has come to an end so you might be feeling that a seven year cycle or a 14 year cycle is coming to an end for you right now for some of you it might feel like something like 13 years six five years well you feel more or less that a cycle is coming to an end for you and right now what's happening with these eclipses that are taking place now and uh well well that took place now and in december and that's coming in the in the early parts of next year what you're going to find is that that sets the tone for what's going to happen for the next six to seven years and you're going to find this hap this applies also to uh, global uh, matters including politics the environment trends that are moving ahead in terms of trade in terms of um uh, policies etc and you're going to find that this is going to kind of stick with us for a little while so whatever you've noticed that has happened in the last um i would say um three three to four weeks maybe three weeks mm, actually it's more like two to three weeks i would say it depends you know um because some, different people are impacted in this energy differently but I would say if you look back at the what's been happening in your life, as well as in the lives around you, as well as globally, what's happening in the last two to three weeks, you're going to find that this is something that stays and continues as we go along. And it's what we're going to be dealing with. It's what we're going to be grappling with. Now, this is not just to do with things that are negative or negatively impacting us, but rather it also uh, shines a light on what your dreams are and what is it what is your focus? What is it that you actually desire? And you're going to be working with that for the next few years. You're going to be working with that. I think that if you start with something right now, if you've made this decision that October has brought you to, then you would find that within two to three years, you would have been able to um, make that happen. You would be able to make it happen, whether it's it's a move that you're trying to make, whether it's you tr it's something with regard to your health, whether it's regard to something with your work, your career goals, or also with love, you're going to find that as you go along in um, in the next two to three years, you're going to be able to move along with those goals quite rapidly. So that it sets that into motion as well. But there's other energies here at play, which really make it quite a weary time. It makes one quite wary of what one is in contact with to, to a large extent. So um, I think that that is also something I'd like to talk about. And um I think what it is really is that um, there's a lot of different energy impacting the earth right now. There's a lot of different energy within the earth right now. And it could be because, you know, we at a time where the veil is a bit thinner and there's a lot of different energy that has come into our earth. OK, and not all of this energy is good. So the problem with that is that. Uh, and I'm going to talk about the, what's bad first, and then I'm going to talk about what's good. So don't worry, that's not all bad. All right. So what's happened is that this the veil, which is thinner, um, or this this the space that we're in, has invited um, a lot of negative energy. Well, I would go as far as to say evil energy in our lives. And the problem with that is that it's impacting the planet. It's it's working on the planet. It's working its way in, in it. And 
I would even go so far as to say that some have invited this energy into our, our planet, largely because of a degree of foolishness, largely because people don't quite understand the impact of what they are doing. And um, sometimes these um, motivations can be quite um, um, altruistic in nature, but it's also not necessarily doing uh, people well it's not really doing the planet good, it's not doing themselves well, and it's not doing the rest of us good. So there's all of that to work with right now, okay? And now what is actually um, allowing it to sustain itself, what's allowing this evil energy or different types of evil energy, different varying degrees of negativity that's impacting us right now to continue to sustain itself is that we are locked into a paradigm of fear. So if you think about the media, if you think about what we are undergoing right now, you need to you understand that we are constantly being fed fear and we are constantly in a state where we are fearing for our lives on some level or the other or we've been told rather that we need to fear for our lives in some way or the other. Whether we should fear for our lives uh, is another matter completely. And perhaps that needs another video. Um, I was thinking actually of creating a, another space where people can, where I can speak more openly about these things because as you know, YouTube is censoring quite a lot right now. And um, I just, oh, but let me know if you're interested and if you're interested in getting more in depth in these matters and I will create another space where I can talk more freely about these matters. I'm always having to choose my words very carefully when I do these energy forecasts here. Um, so having said that, and this is something that, impacts the entire population it doesn't just impact those uh, who have to chosen a particular path or not chosen a particular path okay so um, that is important I think so what I was trying to say is that the energy that allows this evil or this negativity this harm to actually sustain itself to continue is the fact that we are feeding it with our fear and every time we feel afraid on any level whether it's for ourselves, whether it's for our children, whether it's for our parents. in any time that we feel fear, it's replacing trust, it's replacing love, it's replacing an energy of faith. And at that moment, um, it, can be, it can be bred or it can breed to become something bigger than it is or, any, or anything that, uh, it can become something that needs to be reckoned with. Let's just put it that way. It's something that can be that has legs. <laughs> All right. So I think that uh, that is unfortunately the state that we are in right now. And I don't see this actually changing because um, the world is gripped on this uh, fairy tale of fear, um, if you want to call it that. And there is going to be more of a sh shove almost towards that. Now, this um, negative energy that's impacting us is most likely going to leave us by uh, the end of the eclipse. I'm hoping so. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated upon that uh, about that. I might just do it with a post on as opposed to another video, but it's going to change. The energy is going to shift. This is it's not going to be as, anywhere as bad as this. Now, as for the positive, okay. Uh, the positive is that with everything that's negative that's actually happening right now on this planet. There's an equal amount of goodness that's coming in. There's an equal amount of light that's coming in. There's an equal amount of um, of goodness that's trying to find its way through to you. So if you're a light worker, if you work with energy on any level, if you pray at all, then I would really suggest to you to reach for that light to be able to separate through the negativity, through the fear, and to be able to reach for that light and maintain your connection with the light, maintain your connection with that. As far as light workers are concerned, if you're having difficulty right now working with healing, working with actually um, being able to read um, fortunes for people, read people's destinies, etc., uh, don't despair. This will shift. You will be able to connect to that energy again. It's just not a time where we can see things clearly. And I always advise people not to do readings during the times of eclipses because what you're seeing is not really what's going to be the case a few months down the line. What's, it's, what is better to do is simply to read the eclipse and read what that means for you. And then you'll be able to understand how it impacts you over the next six months. And then for some, as I'm mentioning now, 
in this in terms of this eclipse how it's going to impact us for the next five to six years i would say uh with with um outcomes in the third year from now so i think that as i mentioned if you're working on something etc you'll be able to reach its fruition by the third year by the second to the uh, and a half to the third year and I think that that is um, what many are interested in is how you can navigate through this and how you can find a way to be able to reach one's goals in this time but I think in terms of the energy as it sits over us globally it's got a really um, it's sitting on us like an elephant sits on a person and it's quite crushing in a way and so one needs to be able to acknowledge that that one needs to be able to understand the impact of that because what it's not as if we are not impacted by this you see the every time we are impacted by these types of energies we change and we change forever um we we will change again and we'll have many opportunities to change but we should not should not discount the fact that we have changed as a result of those energies impacting us or those decisions taken by governments or those decisions taken by world authorities Okay, so each time we are changing and changing and changing. And I think that that is something that we really need to recognize uh, how far we, we've come. There's another matter that I want to talk about. And um, this is something that's really hard to talk about. This is something that I think that we all know about on some level. And we just don't get around to to making the changes that we need to make or some of us are aware of it some of us are completely oblivious of it anyhow i'm going to mention it here on many levels the energy that we have right now signal the collapse of our civilization as we know it and when i look at it psychically when i look at it i ask and i ask for answers what i see is that in a period of about 300 years that uh, the goodness will come into our lives. So a kind of purity dawns upon the earth and we are able to revive ourselves, all right? And, um, you know, this is something that can be reversed. This is something that can be stopped on its tracks and we can actually change. But the way in which we need to change this, the way in which we need to be able to uh, backtrack is really to be able to uh, give the earth and its spirit the significance it requires and to be able to understand how sacred you are and to be able to understand how every cell in your being is sacred and how that we need to protect that we need to protect the nucleus of ourselves we need to protect our well-being we need to protect our earth and that's not by make, doing a conference coming to some decision that is not really helping the earth but rather by actually living in a way that's in harmony with the earth and in the way that hunter-gatherers used to live, actually, you know, I know I'm sitting in an apartment here in Germany, um, which is fully furnished, and I'm very far from that myself. But it's something that I see constantly as being the suggested route to be able to uh, continue in our in our way. And let me just expand upon that. Basically, all the actions that we take right now, and how we live right now. Uh, is is destroying ourselves our souls as well as the earth now we can sit there and be all new agey about it and talk about it and meditate ourselves into a very good space and we can actually be delusional about it if we want to or we can actually look at what the impact is and wake up a little bit and understand that what we've done until now is that we've not um, stepped fully into the space that we need to Okay, so all of those of you who uh, feel very spiritual, who do your meditations, who work with yourselves constantly, and if you think that's enough, and then you go to work and you do all these other things, and you live in a way that still partakes of the society, you are still not giving your soul and your being what it needs in order for you to honor it. Okay, now I might sound a bit rude in the way I'm mentioning this, or a bit impatient rather, but it's um, and perhaps I don't have a way of putting this nicer, but I think that ultimately what it is um, that, and excuse my grammar as well, <laughs> but I think that what it is is that we need to actually understand that in every action that we take, are we honoring our soul? Are we honoring our bodies? Are we honoring the cells in our being um, I mean the physical cells you know the, mo the molecules that we have are we honoring that or are we detracting from that 
Okay, okay. So that it really just boils down to that. If we're still in a pursuit for money because we need to pay our rent, because we need to make car payments, because we need to pay for our studies, and you're still in that cycle, and you've got a million excuses as to why you can't step away, or you can't do this, or you can't do that, then you are still in that. It's not enough to acknowledge it and do nothing about it. Okay. So ultimately, I'm not saying that if a few of us um, take this path, that we will not be a part, that we will stop the end of this, the, the crumbling of our civilization. I'm not saying that. What I am saying that is that if we, if, if a few of us actually decide that we're going to change our lives and choose a path for us that is actually sustainable for our souls and for our beings and our bodies, then what you actually will find is that those genes will continue to live in a few hundred years and not the others. All right. So that is most likely to be the case. Now, I don't, um, I don't, um, I think people will wonder, well, what are you talking about? Are you talking about some cataclysmic event? Or are we talking about a war or something like this? Well, I would go ahead and say that a war is already being fought. We are already in a war. We have been in it for some time already. And I would say that we don't need nuclear warheads to be able to um, blast us into oblivion for us not to survive. The crumbling of the society of our existence is so... Um, it's so subtle, it's so, it's there, it's it's so deceiving in a way that you are led to choose that for yourself. And, you know, there, there's so many matters in the, in it, it has to do with the way we eat. It has to do with the poisons in our food. It has to do with the poisons in the products that we use. It's, it has to do in adv, uh, with advertising and how you're convinced that you're not good enough and that you need a thousand different products in order for you to, to, to feel good. It has to do with all these different types of things. It has to do with a narrative that undermines you and gaslights you every step of the way. All right. And that is unfortunately the world that we have inherited and that I think our parents have inherited and largely our grandparents, albeit a bit differently. So um, it looks like I'm losing a bit of light. I might look like I'm not losing light, but I can see how grainy the, the picture has become here. Um, so, um, yeah. So anyhow, this video has been long enough as it is. Um, I'm just going to end it by saying that if you want to hear more, then let me know because I will, I could make more videos. Perhaps, uh, I won't always talk into the camera. Perhaps I'll just do some, um, audio messages for you. And I, I could talk more about this, but if I don't hear any interest in this, then I don't need to actually, uh, make any videos. And, um, yeah. And then there was a little announcement that I made at the end of the, um, uh, the, one of the, the this week's weekly oracle card guidance that means the week of the twenty uh, first of November, and uh, what I mentioned there is that from the first of December onward, you I'm going to do my best to be able to get out a video to you every day every day at least uh, pick a card reading at least till the end of December. I've been exhausted. I've been really tired. I've been very overwhelmed, and I've been very behind. And then I do know that I promised you I Ching readings like a year and a half ago and I still haven't gotten down to it. So I'm really sorry about that. And I will try to get to that. I think looking at my schedule and and what it has, I think I'm only going to get to that around April, May next year. So bear with me. Um, I, I do work full time. I am studying. I'm a full time mom <laughs> uh, as much as we all are full time parents. And, um, and I also uh, do a lot of... Um, uh, also uh, quite a bit of charity work in terms of the energy healing etc and so I have very little time left over for the YouTube channel and I apologize for the fact that I've neglected you all I am aware of the fact that I have neglected you and that I I should perhaps do more for the channel um, but also there's very few of you who respond and I do appreciate I love reading your comments I do appreciate that but it it doesn't seem like there's much of a demand anyhow so I have also slackened a little bit because of the lack of demand I would say um, and I think also just because I I just haven't been able to find the time the the problem is that when I work with when I do these readings it demands psychic energy and um, the psychic energy it, it tires one it exhausts one 
So if I have a whole day of reading for people working with energy, working uh, as medical intuitive, also using psychic energy, then by the time I come to the end of the day and I have a little bit of time left over, I just need to to kind of um, go go inward or spend some time with my family and and not like also just give more. And I've just been pretty exhausted as a result. But I think I will have a little bit of time. I've kind of spaced myself out really well for December and I'm hoping that I, I have a lot more time to be able to dedicate uh, at least this month, the month of December to the channel. And then um, as we get into January, it'll, we'll come back to the, just the um, weekly Oracle card guidance and perhaps an energy forecast once or twice a month. All right. So that is my news and I hope you're all doing well. Please let me know how you're doing. I want to hear from you all. And um, yeah, I wish you all very well. I hope that this information helps you. It's not meant to instill any fear. It's meant to actually persuade you away from fear. It's meant for you to be able to empower yourselves in order to take your life back and to understand how sacred you are as a being as a living being and the fact that we need to respect our our sanctity and to be able to move ahead with that knowledge with that that vision and with that divine that divinity in order to be able to um spread that more and to, for each of us to understand and see each other in the divine and so are the words aloha or, or namaste um, these, the meanings of these words are very much to do with recognizing the divine in another. And I would say holding each other's hands and walking in this divine energy in order to be able to empower each other and to be able to have a, the best life we can possibly have uh, together. And that is why I have this channel. And this is why I share this information with you. And I hope that um, you get that. And um, yes, I'm wishing you all very well on your way. Please stay healthy and well and unoppressed in these times. And also um, blessings abound from Kismet Rising.